Hi everybody, welcome to this week's Ghetto Vlog and that's not a bad way to start the vlog, right? With the completion of a game, I think that's game it's either 15 or 16 of the year, so we're not doing too badly. Uh, that is Castlevania Lords of Shadow. Uh, getting this completed is one of the benefits of being ill. Um, that's right, that's why there wasn't a Wednesday video. I've had a chest infection. I'm still struggling a bit now, so if you see a lot of jump cuts throughout this video, just assume I'm coughing my guts up somewhere and hopefully I feel better over the next couple of days so that I can go out and about, do a lot of the things that I've got planned for this vlog um, so that there is actually a vlog. Otherwise, you'll be seeing this footage uh, next Sunday, but hopefully uh, that isn't the case. And like I say, taking the positives from having a chest infection and not having a Wednesday video, which we'll do next week, of course, uh, means that I was able to do a lot more gaming. So I finished Lords of Shadow, nearly enjoyed it. Um, highly recommend this one. Um, I was discussing this with some people on the Ghetto Gang that have played through it. I'd give this an 8, maybe an 8.5 out of 10, but it almost doesn't tell the full story because I feel like there's almost a 9.5 game in here. It's just... There's a few issues with it, a few things that could be fixed. It's one of them games if it got a remaster, a few sort of like improvements here and there, a few quality of life improvements. Um, and maybe it's a little bit long. Um, but generally speaking, a fantastic game. Graphically, it holds up brilliantly. I did play it on the Xbox One X uh, for full disclosure. But um, yeah, if you haven't played this one, definitely pick it up. If you enjoyed God of War 1, 2, 3 or Ascension, uh, I'd say this is a must play, but as I've stressed before in these videos, you have to stick with it. The first few hours of this aren't great. It's very stop-start. Yeah, it doesn't really give you much in the first few hours. It makes you think it's going to be a good playthrough. But once you get through, I'd say maybe four or five hours, and you get to around level chapter four, chapter five, something like that, I think this game really comes into its own. And yeah, a uh, very, very good time I had with this one. Really enjoyed it. And yeah, I think it's a few tweaks away from being an all-time classic and definitely underrated. Uh, not one that I hear many people talk about for saying it's such a big franchise that people have so much love for. I don't hear many people hyping this game up. I can only assume that that's because of the first few hours. I, I can imagine a lot of people put some time into this and thought, nah, not for me. But stick with it. It's very enjoyable. Uh, one of Probably my favourite game that I've played this year, actually. So yeah, uh, highly recommend that. And at the end, it almost gives you like a teaser for the second one, but I've heard no positive things about the sequel. A lot of people say that's better, so it's kind of putting me off. I'm not going to jump straight into it. I like to, once I've played a big game like that, um, I put a lot of hours into finishing that. I like to then go into bits of retro, schmups, platformers, you know, nice, easy, jump in for a few hours type games before I then make the big decision of what sort of like next 20 plus hour game I'm going to play. So yeah, uh, that's that. Great way to start the week. And Continuing with the theme of a great way to start the week, shout out to the Ghetto Gang, and in particular Dylan over at Hyper Trigger X. He posted uh, a link to this. This was an Amazon purchase for just £15, and I could not buy it. And that is the deluxe edition of Getsu Fumaden Undying Moon. So this is a 2022 Konami release, and it's billed on Amazon as being a 2.5D hack and slash roguevania platform game. So yeah, <laughs> lots of different genres rammed into one cartridge. It's a sequel to 1987's Getsu Fumiden, which I believe is actually on the cart as well. Beautiful art style, this one. Um, I purchased this a while back. I actually mentioned this on a video. I think I bought like quite a few Switch, video, uh, Switch games at the time. And I paid a lot of money for this. I paid in the high 30s for this. It initially got quite a limited release, I think. But then it got a wider release and the price came down quite a lot. Um, but for £15, this is an unbelievable deal. I think I am going to trade this in. Simply because CEX are giving £26 trading. And like I say, I already own the game. And I don't really have the room for collector's editions. This is a very tall box comparative to other Switch games. And yeah, it's not one that I need to have for the collection. So this is one that I am just going to basically use as um, CEX trade credit profit. Um... I would say buy it, I'm going to put a link in the description below, but I think they quickly realised the error of their ways. I think pretty much everybody in the ghetto gang bought one or two copies and uh, the next morning it had gone back up to like I think £45 or something. Um, but yeah, um, this is one that I'm going to be trading in. Hopefully in the next couple of days we're going on a hunt and I'm going to trade this in at CEX because this vlog is going to be a vlog of grails. Grails might be pushing it. You know, everyone overuses the term grail, but... We've got some fantastic pieces coming uh, on this vlog. 
uh, one of which I've already got sort of pre-ordered, that sort of like pre-arranged deal that we're going to get on the game hunt, all being well. And there's also something coming, hopefully, in the post that I got from eBay, which is going to be probably one of my favourite pieces from my video game collection. So yeah, that should hopefully be on this vlog as well. But let's keep up the theme of top things, right? This was an eBay purchase, and this is... Well, I'll just show you what it is, and then I'll discuss it with you. Ah, <coughs> <coughs> oh, Jesus. This is, on the Mega Drive, Mega Turrican. Now, don't get too excited. Uh, this was a box-only purchase, and I got this for £40. The seller had this, I think, for £55. And I negotiated it down to 40 This is a very expensive game. Currently on CEX, uh, with manual copy of this, is 170 And without manual, it's 135 So I think to get box only for £40, I think that's a good deal. I reckon I could probably pick up the cartridge for a similar price. I reckon I can get this and the cartridge for less than 100 all in. And yeah, I'm happy with that. That's kind of where... Uh, future me checking in and uh, I'm not happy with that. So as soon as I finished recording, obviously I had a look at these things and um, I'm pretty sure it's a reproduction. Uh, I'll show you why. So I don't know if it's going to come on through on camera, but it's really glossy. Uh, I pulled out a lot of my other Blue Spine Mega Drive games to sort of compare and none of them have this kind of real gloss shine to it. Also, there's like a black outline on the wording of Mega Drive. The whole thing just looks and feels off, even like the folds and... Like I say, with the black outline on Mega Drive, none of my other Blue Spine games have got a black outline on the wording for Mega Drive. So I mean, it's a sloppy fake at that. So I'm going to contact the seller on eBay. I've just had a look. He does actually have another game, which is um, sort of like box only, which is quite worrying. Um, so yeah, um, not impressed. And then we have got a gift. So this uh, came from Get A Gang Member. And this came off the back of a recent game hunt when we went to Game Shack in Leicester. This is a game that I picked up and I almost bought and I kind of had non-buyer's remorse. Um, but yeah, we've got a note first of all. Hello brother, long story short, found this in a charity shop. Don't know if it's been resealed or if it's the original seal. Anyway, already have this, thought you would like it. Have a great day brother, PS2 Many Games. Shout out to PS2 Many Games. If you are a big PS2 fan or collector or hunter, if you're not already, make sure you check out PS2 Many Games. He's taking on the mammoth task of collecting every single PAL PS2 game. That's a huge collection. Um, I think he's, is he halfway? I know he's got a lot, a lot of games. So yeah, I'll put a link uh, in the comment section below, in the description below, should I say. But that game that he's very kindly sent to me, and this looks like an original seal to me, because the, the game looks mint. Absolutely delighted with this, and it's got like the uh, pull seal on it, which you don't often get on a reseal. And that is 24 the game. So as I say, this is one that we looked at in Game Shack a couple of weeks ago. Um, but yeah, massive shout out to PS2 Many Games for sending this my way. And we're also going to be doing a giveaway. So at the end of the video, I'm going to be giving a copy of this away. And the reason being is, I had put a bid in on eBay before the generosity of PS2 Many Games let me know who's going to send me this. I forgot all about it. It must have been like the next day or something. I got a notification on the phone saying bid accepted. And I remember I was busy at the time and thought nothing of it. And then like, I looked into it and I thought, ah, oh, what is 24 of the game? It was a good price. And I thought, well, I'll just give it away. So that's what we're going to do. I've got a nice steel book copy of this. Uh, it should be here soon. And uh, yeah, we'll be doing that at the end of this vlog. Uh, so yeah, if you want to uh, win a copy of this, and it's a stunning steelbook, right? There's not too many steelbooks on the PS2. Stay tuned to the end of the video, and uh, I'll be giving one of these away to you guys. So yeah, great start to the vlog in many different ways. Um, but in terms of this uh, video... <coughs> oh, man. So in terms of the rest of this vlog, hopefully, all being well. Um, like I say, if I feel better over the next couple of days, and I feel well enough to go out and do some hunting... We should be having some amazing pieces added to the collection. Some things that I'm very, very excited about. Um, so yeah, we're going to do that. Um, before any hunting though, um, there is the small matter of the Xbox 360 store that we need to take a look at. Okay, so with the imminent closure of the 360 store, 
I've decided to take one last look, see if there's anything I need to buy. I'm really tempted to buy outfits, even though <laughs> no one's going to see it. I don't need it, but I'm currently playing through uh, Lord of Shadows. And, ah, oh, man, I'm sure there's better ways to spend £3.39 than that. I mean, that's a bit boring, isn't it? Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep flicking through the store. I, I will probably look at some games as well, but... Combat Cross, £2.69. You'd think that'd come with this, wouldn't you? Robin back Got to offer. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, now you're talking. <laughs> Sleeping Dogs has got some pretty cool outfit options. Got the full GSP pack. Check this one out. Ha <laughs> ha! As it's been a few years since I've looked at any of this, I think we're going to have to uh, <laughs> make the necessary amendments. The, don't be this guy. Don't don't be this guy. Go go straight to this. This this is what you want. Arsenal, but this period in Arsenal's history, this Puma period, yeah, this weren't really at it right there. Not really filling me with good memories. This. So here we are. Giving myself an updated look. I've got the Jordan 4s on. I made a purchase. 65p. I was happy with that. 65 pence. I got a Super Street Fighter t-shirt. I'm bold. And this is me now for the foreseeable. <laughs> I'll take that. Now let's have a look at the games. Looking at Mirror of Fate. And it's shown as being 9 99 But when I look online, it's showing on the Xbox Store. It's being one ninety nine on sale. Um... I don't know why it's not showing over on the 360. Might have to purchase it on the Xbox One and then hopefully I can play it on here. I'm not sure. Bay of the Dog. A Snoop Dogg beat em up. I have never seen that before. <laughs> Might have to free trial that one. Okay, so just bought my first purchase. Just £1.19. Darkstalkers Resurrection. Uh, look at that. Two games for the price of one. Night Warriors, Darkstalkers Revenge and Darkstalkers 3. These feature classic gameplay and unique characters as well as a host of new features. Include a variety of HD visuals, uh, online play with 8 player lobbies. Obviously won't be able to do that. YouTube replay sharing, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, I mean, that's that's good for that price, right? Not interested in any of that, but... Love the artwork on these games. Yeah, man. Decent first purchase. Let's see what else we can find. Whoops. My uh, second purchase, I own 1942 in various different ways, but the 67p, yeah, I'll have it on the, uh, on the kiosk, thank you very much. So I am here in Kirkby in Ashfield. Viewers of the channel will know that only means one thing. Kirkby Sales and Exchange. I love this shop. Every time I come here, I'm almost guaranteed to leave with something special. But today is kind of different. Today I am 100% guaranteed because we've got a pre-arranged deal. They showed something on their Facebook page a few days ago or a week ago now. And uh, it's been something I've been wanting for a long time. So... We're going to pick that up and inevitably there will be some more stuff I want as well. So let's go and take a look at this fantastic shop.
Well, as always, Kurt Bissell's an exchange was a complete success. The thing I knew I was getting is even better than I thought it was. And I've come away with something else, unsurprisingly, which I'm very happy to be going home with. Um, but before we get into all of that, um, you know the drill. When we come down here, we usually head to the Sutton and Ashfield CEX. I quite often do the charity shop route as well in Alfreton, but to be honest, I'm still rough. The last thing I want to be doing is walking around every charity shop within a town centre, if I'm being honest. I'm sort of getting through these filming parts with cough suites and uh, God knows what else. So, uh, yeah, we're going to fly to CEX, see what they've got, and then we're going to get back to the 3.0 and uh, then we'll take off what I picked up. Okay, so back from my little game hunt. Uh, I did go to CEX. I did buy quite a few games, but that's going to be the basis of my Wednesday video. Um... Every cloud has a silver lining, right? Like I keep saying. So with me not putting out last Wednesday's video, that Wednesday video is like, like a 2.0. Um, it's kind of evolved, and it's going to be a bigger, better video than it intended to be. So uh, yeah, really looking forward to that. The only game that I almost picked up, uh, aside from the stuff that I picked up for the midweek video, uh, was a, an Xbox 360 Classics, which I didn't already own as part of the Best Sellers range, which I've recently started collecting. Uh, it was Halo Wars, but... I know that I have got that in here, so that was a bit kindly sent across to me. Um, so there was no sort of like PS4 hits or essentials. Like I said, it's getting very um, few and far between in terms of the games that I still need now for those sort of subsets. Uh, but like I say, this was very kindly uh, sent across to me. And as you can see, there is a note. So we'll get into this first before we get into my other pickups. Hey Callum, just a little thing to help you with your collecting addiction. <laughs> Keep up the great videos, Adrian. So massive shout out to Adrian, he reached out to me on Instagram and um, yeah, it's very kind of him to send that across to me and help me out with my classics best sellers. Uh, right, okay, so before we get into anything else, I just want to say the mega Turrican debacle is sorted. The seller pretty much uh, refunded me um, almost instantly after I messaged um, following that first bit of recording that we did on this vlog. So yeah, um, at least got my money back on this one and... If anything, I've gained a Mega Drive case. So I've got, <laughs> I've got an empty case, should I need one in the future. Um, and the postman has been, but I think we'll open this after we go through my Kurt Bissell's and Exchange pickups because this is going to lead to something else. So yeah, Kurt Bissell's and Exchange, right? I mean, feels like every time I go, I sit here and I tell you guys that I don't really know... Um, what to say about a place every time I go. I, I always feel better for the experience. And uh, today was no different. There's quite a few things that I could have purchased, to be honest. Uh, but the first thing that I picked up was a Nintendo Switch game, a game which has intrigued me for quite a long time. It's one of them sort of games that every review I've ever heard about it, the people say it's fantastic, but they always kind of say, I don't want to give away too much because it'll ruin it. Um, graphically, it's nothing special whatsoever. I don't know if it adds to the charm, but apparently it's the writing and the dialogue that sort of make this game what it is. And it's quite an, an uncommon game physically. Um, I think it got a, quite a limited release via Fan Gamer, uh, and that is Undertale. So this is a 2015 2D RPG. And as you'll be seeing on screen now, very sort of distinctive in its simplicity, shall we say, when it comes to its artwork. I don't really have that much that I can tell you about it simply because I don't want to look too much into it myself. I don't want any spoilers. I put this on last night. I literally played it for half an hour. Um, so I can't really give too much away, but hopefully we'll get some more time to play this uh, and I can give you a few more thoughts on it on this vlog. Um, so yeah, I think it's very much a dialogue based game, maybe with some humour. Um, whether it's going to be for me or not, I don't know. Um, it does come with this really nice, um, I think it's like an art book. But what really caught my eye was it's like gilded in gold on the side um so yeah very um nice little art book this one definitely been no expense spared and it's all in like the same sort of colors and everything as you'll be seeing on screen now um and yeah and i think that very much sets the tone for the game so if you've played this one obviously without giving out any spoilers to anybody just let me know in the comment section whether you enjoyed it or not um but yeah um like i say what i've always been intrigued by and what i'm happy to add to my nintendo switch collection and that takes me to the big pickup, the one which I went there for. This is, like I said before, something which was on their Facebook page. It came into store. I messaged straight away and I said, please, can you hold that for me? And somebody had messaged before me. Um, so it was kind of like about 24 hours of being on tenterhooks. And then they got back to me and said that the person didn't want it anymore. So it kind of worked out perfectly. I said, brilliant, hold it for me and I'll come and get it soon. Um, and it's kind of good the way it worked out because, you know, when you're not well, 
um, it's kind of sometimes you need that kick up the backside to get out get some fresh air go out and do your stuff and knowing that there was already this there waiting for me was kind of that inspiration I needed if I'd have gone out and made all that effort and felt terrible uh, and not come back with anything uh, obviously it would be a very different experience so the fact that I knew I was going out and getting this yeah it really did give me that prompt to go out and do a hunt for you guys and of course for myself and this is an item that I said at the start of the video about grails right can I call it a grail probably not because it's not like very difficult to attain it's not overly expensive this cost me 60 pounds but you don't often see it in this condition and it's just one of the things that i've always wanted it used to be more expensive than this but it's one of the things that when you buy one you're going to need the second one and i'll just show you guys it's uh, the last of us but the ellie edition uh so i've always thought this was really cool but you know what i'm saying right there's two of these there's a joel edition as well um so I feel like I need both, <laughs> but when space is at a premium, do I need both? Let me know in the comments section because, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to have to display it with the spine. It'd be nice to be able to display it like that. Maybe if I had the Joel one as well, I could sort of display Ellie one side, Joel the other side, I have some PS3 games in the middle. I'm not quite sure, but I know that I'm very happy to have this, especially in this condition. The Joel one's actually um, less expensive, so uh, I suppose that gives that added impetus. Um, to pick that edition up as well. And I've not actually opened it. Um, obviously, I trust the people at Kirkby Sales and Exchange. They said it was complete. So I don't really know what's in here. So let's take a look at what you get. Okay, so you get this almost like cloth binder, is it? So that's what forms part of the opening of the game. And then we've got a Velcro seal. And it all just sort of opens out into... It looks like one of them things that's going to be difficult to put away once you get it out. So this might be the only time I do this. But I'll be showing you guys on camera. So it opens out fully. And then inside we've got like a skin for the controller. What looks like a poster. Yep. And then we've got the art of The Last of Us. We've got The Last of Us, Ellie Edition. So is this the actual game? Yeah, interesting. I thought it was just going to come with the standard copy of the game. So that's nice because I already have the game, of course. Um, so it's really nice for it to come like in a different format in this cardboard sleeve. And then there's also a Naughty Dog sticker and a comic book. Uh, Last of Us comic book. That's really cool. Yeah, so very happy with that. And I'm guessing that is all there because every pouch has something inside it. Um, so yeah, I'll leave that out for now. because It looks like something that's going to be a pain to put away. And yeah, just something that I've wanted in my collection for quite a long time. Um, really nice piece, fantastic game. I love The Last of Us. I've played through the first one three times and I'm thinking I need to play through the second one again. Um, the second one really divided opinion for reasons that didn't bother me. Um, I'm trying not to give away too many spoilers because I know people are still watching the TV show, but obviously there's a big incident that happens in the second one. That didn't bother me. Um, the only thing I didn't like about the second one was I felt like it was a bit too long. It felt like there was an extra couple of hours put on the end and I don't feel like there was any real need for it. Nothing really happened that hadn't already happened in my opinion. Um, but I'd like to play through it again because the actual game itself is really good and sometimes you want to just play these games with lesser expectations and not sort of go into it um, expecting a 10 out of 10 game or yeah not being shrouded by a lot of the negativity from other people so I definitely think The Last of Us 2 is a game that I'm going to hopefully replay again hopefully this year because I remember the gameplay itself being solid uh, I'm really enjoying that part of it so yeah uh, obviously like a lot of you guys I'm enjoying the TV show as well but delighted delighted to have that um, so Let's get into this box, shall we? So this has come from the legend that is Nikki. So I spoke about Nikki on last week's vlog. Um, Nikki is the kind chap who repaired my 360 and enabled me to play My Horse and Me Too. So I'm not sure. If <laughs> I'm not sure if thank you is the right word, but um, yeah. <laughs> he, uh, I said, 
I mentioned, I believe, that Nicky has contacts in Germany and he's able to buy things from that part of Europe and have them held in a German warehouse and then sort of ship them all together. So what Nicky often does is he helps out a lot of ghetto gang members. He'll sort of get a lot of stuff in this German warehouse and then he'll ship it all over at reduced costs and then send it out to different ghetto gang members from there. So massive shout out to Nicky for helping us all out with that one. So in here, I think what I have are some of the rarer PS4 hits. Um, PS4 hits, like all subsets, you go into it thinking it's gonna be easy but there are a few that are difficult to find, certainly in the UK, as seems to be the case, right, with most of these sets. So, the hardest one I had last week, which was Gundam. Gundam Versus, I think that's the most difficult one to find. And then there's like three, four, five others that are difficult, and I have, I think, three of them in here. So with this, most of the difficult ones have been added to my collection. Ah, okay, so this, I remember that. Right, there's two in here and one other game that he gifted me. So, these are the ones that I purchased um, and we got them via Germany, so it was a lot cheaper for me. First one, uh, Wolfenstein The New Order. Wolfenstein games are a menace to all essentials and hits collectors because they have a red spine anyway. So, like, you always like look and it's always the standard version of the game. Uh, it's not easy to find the PlayStation Hits version of Wolfenstein, like I say, so this is a German copy. Uh, ironically for the game, if you've played it, you'll know. Uh, so yeah, Wolfenstein, and a very difficult one to find uh, is UFC 2. Um, so yeah, uh, another nice one to add to the collection there. And again, this is in German, I believe. So probably didn't get a UK release. Uh, I really enjoyed the first couple of UFC games. I remember having them on the 360. I remember playing the demo for hours on end, but it was um, Chuck Liddell and Shogun Hua. And that was very much my era of UFC. That was sort of like, I remember watching a bit of Pride and then going into UFC a bit later on. And that sort of like whole Chuck Liddell, Shogun Hua, um, Anderson Silva. That was like my era of absolutely loving it. It felt like a different place. That fantastic intro music that they used to have on the UFC. Joe Rogan was there, Goldie on commentary. For me, that was the glory days. I still like watch UFC, but not live or anything, not like I used to. I just sort of catch up with the highlights. But anyway, I'm digressing. M my point initially was going to be that I kind of fell off the UFC games after the first few. And this was a gift from Nicky. He said he had two versions of this. Um, very kind of him. So this is Mortal Kombat 11. The Steelbook edition. I've always seen this at CX and thought, oh, I love that Steelbook. It's so nice. But I already own Mortal Kombat 11. I already own a Steelbook of it. I just own a different version. So it's one of those ones I've never really wanted to pull the trigger on. So to be gifted this was, uh, yeah, much appreciated because now I can have this very, very cool looking Steelbook uh, alongside the other one. So as always, massive shout out to Nikki for that. And the reason that I wanted to open this stuff last is what I want to do now is turn my attention to the PS4 hits and the PS3 Essentials sections because we had all those PS3 Essentials we got sent over last week from uh, Poland that I still need to get cased up because they arrived loose. So I'm going to get all those cased up, get all these put away and then we can sort of like bask in the red glory of the PS3 Essentials and the PS4 hits. Um, almost complete, right? So yeah, let's, let's crack on with that. Okay, so we'll turn our attention to PlayStation 4 hits shortly, but first, let's crack on with PS3 Essentials, shall we? So this is all part of the lot that I got from Poland last week. Um, these are all brand new to me, some very hard, some of the hardest PS3 Essentials to find. Um, PS, uh, sorry, Virtual Tennis 4, I just needed the disc, because I had the standard copy of the disc. These I've already got, so we're going to get all of these put into cases. These are my sort of duplicates that are going to be used as giveaways at some point. So I'm going to take some of these cases, add them to all of these, and then we can get added to the wall itself. Let's go. Okay, so what you can see behind me in all its glory is the full PS3 Essentials Collection minus four. 
One of which, uh, as we spoke about, is already secured. That's with my friend Misha in the Netherlands. That'll be here soon. And then I discussed the final three on last week's vlog. So, a couple of those I think we have got, or pretty much got. I don't like to write checks before they're cashed. Um, but we've got some strong leads on those. So yeah, hopefully they'll be secured from all over the world as well. Like literally the Southern Hemisphere, um, different parts of Europe. Anyway, we'll get to that when they arrive. The one that I'm struggling with is looking like it's definitely going to be the last one to complete. If indeed it exists, because I'm still not 100% sure, is FIFA 17. Now, it's a difficult one because Ghetto Gang have been able to track down the odd images of it. Originally, we could only find stock photos, which led to the fact it didn't exist, which is strange because there's like FIFA 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18... Why there isn't 17, I don't know. But it looks like a few copies may have got out in South Africa. There's one image of the actual game itself. And there might be an image of the loose disc floating around. I don't know if it's obtainable. I don't know if, if we're going to find it. I don't know if it ever got a proper release. I don't really know if it exists. I'm not going to give up until we've got a definitive answer either way. Um, but yeah, if anybody's got a lead on FIFA 17 PS3 Essentials, let me know because... Yeah, it's looking like it's that one to achieve the impossible. Um, I'm going to make a video on this and everything that it's entailed to get to this point because it's by far the hardest collection I've ever collected in my life. I've spent a lifetime collecting before video games, you know, whatever. Never has something taken so many people, the help of so many individuals from so many countries around the world to get this set. Um, but yeah, we're one away, so anybody knows of a FIFA 17 Essentials, hit me up. Um, but now let's turn our attention to PS4 hits. It's, as you can see, the new additions are protruding from the shelf. I think I've got 49 set on the shelf now. There's one coming from eBay which makes 50, which means there's 7 left. I believe there's 57 in the full set. Uh, I thought I needed fewer than that actually. Uh, so I need to take a look at my list and just clarify what I need and see which ones are still quite difficult to find. Uh, this one needs cleaning. I uh, <laughs> I used this one to make a meme out of. Uh, if you're not following me on Instagram, by the way, uh, go and check it out. I've tried to post a bit more on Instagram uh, recently. So yeah, uh, really happy with how the uh, full PS4 hit set's coming along. And thinking about maybe adding Switch to this section as well, just to uh, add a bit more red to this corner of the room but with essentials done hits done uh let's put everything else away shall we i think that means uh montage montage
that's most of the stuff put away. That's very much a temporary home. Um, we'll figure that out maybe once we get Joel in the collection. Uh, and I say most because I haven't put away 360. That's because there's going to be a lot more added. And I think I'm going to have to rework this entire area yet again because there's so much 360 coming to the 3.0 in the next week or so. So, yeah, we'll do that at a later date. But more importantly, now most of the games have been put away. It's here. So the grail I've been talking about is finally arrived. Let's go and open this. I'm excited about this one. Oh, I'm excited for this one. But before we get into the main event, there has been a couple of other arrivals which we're going to get into. So the first one is a gift. This has come from a ghetto gang member, Dean. Massive shout out to Dean. He messaged me and said that um, he had a duplicate of this and asked me if I had it in my collection. I do not. And he basically said that the disc is a bit scratched, um, but should be able to get it cleaned. It's not too bad. I've seen far worse from CEX, to be honest, I bought worse. Uh, really happy to have this. Uh, that is Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi, I think is the correct pronunciation of that one. Uh, really happy to have it because um, I already have Dragon Ball Z Budokai. Someone let me know in the comment section, right? Because I'm not an expert on Dragon Ball. I'm not an expert on Dragon Ball Z. I'm not an expert on the games. What's the difference between the games and then the Tenkaichi version? Because when I look at my collection, I've got Dragon Ball Z Budokai, I've got Dragon Ball Z Budokai 2, but I don't have Budokai Tenkaichi. I don't know if all the numerical games have a Tenkaichi variant. I don't know if it's just like, I don't know, you know, like Street Fighter's got Super Street Fighter, Ultra Street Fighter, it's just like the next level, more characters all singing or dancing version, that kind of thing. But the one thing I do know about Dragon Ball Z is I absolutely love the artwork. The covers are always fantastic. This is no exception. Uh, so massive shout out to Dean. Really happy to add this to my PS2 collection. Thank you, my friend. Um, very, very happy with that. What a kind man. Okay, and that takes me to this next one. So, this is shout out to Brad. Uh, Brad often gets mentioned on here, right? The legend that is. Uh, this one is very different from Brad because he actually let me pay for it. <laughs> he actually let me send him the money and the postage. He found this in his local uh, CEX. Now, it's an Xbox 360 Classics uh, bestsellers. That's such a mouthful. We're just going to start calling them bestsellers, right? And I did say at the time that I'm going to primarily try and do it in person. I'm not sort of in a rush. But when he messaged me and said he's found this one, I said, yeah, grab it for me. Because to my knowledge, this was the most expensive one in the collection. It looks like it's been reduced. So I, I remember thinking at the time it was £15. And £15 is the most expensive of all of the bestsellers. But looking at this, it's now been reduced to £12. Unless I got that wrong. Um, but that is Naruto Rise of a Ninja. Um, so yeah, when he messaged me with this one, and this is one that I'd earmarked as being one of the harder ones to find. I asked him if um, it had the right disc and everything, and it did, so yeah, I said pull the trigger mate, I'll send you the money. And uh, Brad being the legend of the years, he sent it straight away. So massive shout out to Brad, I've got something that I'm going to be sending your way actually, out of that Nintendo lot that I found a few videos back. Um, so yeah, very, very happy with this edition. Um, like I keep saying, we've all subsets, right? It's starting to seem as if there are some that are hard to find. There's a couple of, uh, you know, these bestsellers out there that uh, the Ghetto Gang are finding quite difficult. So we'll get to those down the line, I'm sure. But like I say, I'm definitely not in a rush with these ones. It always seems to be the anime games, right? They always seem to be the difficult ones to find. Don't know anything about Naruto, never seen it. But uh, yeah, I just know that it's a good addition. And some of them do seem to come in this sort of like grey box. Now, this would go more with the sort of the essentials, sorry, the um, classics aesthetic, right? With that sort of grey on the side. I'll probably switch the case out. I don't even know if it's supposed to be like this, but even if it is, I'm probably going to switch it out just because I want the uniformity of this collection. So, yeah, we'll probably switch that one out. But, yeah, thank you very much for grabbing that one for me, Brad. Much appreciated, my friend. And now it's time. Woo! Okay, so right back at the start of the vlog, I spoke about this being... Um, a vlog of grails, a couple of grails. Now, if I overstretch the word grail uh, when it comes to the Ellie edition of The Last of Us, that's probably not a grail. That's probably more something I've wanted for quite a long time. Well, this probably falls somewhere between something I've wanted for a long time and a grail because whilst this is somewhat affordable, I think I paid, I got a good price for this. This is 80 pounds. I know people that found this in CX for like 30, 35 quid a couple of years ago, but not anymore. It's never in stock. And it's become very expensive. But it's all about condition. Because there's cardboard in this here bag. Um, 
So yeah, it's not easy to get in good condition unless you want to start paying 120, 130 pounds. So this isn't mint, but I think from the pictures he sent me, it's good enough for the price I paid. Like I said, this is probably about 50 quid cheaper than the mintier copies that are on eBay. So is there anything else I want to say about it before I open it? Let's just get into it. Let's just get into it. This is something that I, I've always known I had to have in the collection. It, it's, it's undoubted. It's one of the things that I think has been a glaring omission from my collection. It's a stunning, stunning collectible. Now, anybody that's watched this channel for any amount of time will know I've got a penchant for not only cardboard, but sleeve covers, slip covers, anything like that. I've even made whole videos on them before. The weird and wonderful world of slip covers. This is probably the hands down most beautiful sleeve cover there is. I've never actually seen it in person. Um, so this will be the test of that, right? But there's so much bubble wrap. Sent it special delivery as well, so shout out to the seller. Even through the bubble wrap, it looks nice. All right, let's get into it, let's get into it. Ooh, it's shining. Oh, yes. You know what? I know that I'm. I know that I'm being suspenseful, right? But let me just take it in. It's even better looking in person, and the condition. Pff, forget about it. Couldn't ask for much more, really. And that is on the PlayStation 2, the limited edition version of Ultimate Spider-Man. Check that out! Oh my goodness! Yeah, it's even nicer in hand. I didn't know that the sleeve had the sort of metallic finish as well. Uh, I knew that the front did, but I didn't know that the sleeve carried that over. This is gonna have to be displayed forward facing though, right? This is why during the montage, I didn't really do a lot with the PS2 cardboard section. Um, so when I added the um, Shadow of Colossus and also the 24 uh, Steelbook, I didn't really do too much with it because I was thinking to myself, that's gonna have to be reworked once this arrives. Just look at it, right? You're putting some overlay on the screen now. Absolutely stunning. Just a beautiful, beautiful sleeve cover. Like I say, the best one, right? So you can see as well, it says here, for limited edition. So it gets its own limited edition instruction booklet. Now, I'm thinking to myself, and the disc as well. So it's all important to look out for limited edition disc. Now I'm thinking to myself, should this have come with a comic book? Hang on. So on the disc, you get special features. So you get making of the Ultimate Spider-Man, get an exclusive interview with Stanley, character bios, developer tricks and tips, and yeah, it's supposed to be a special edition Ultimate Spider-Man comic book. Ah, okay. So Okay, so I stopped recording that segment just to double check. This should come with a comic book. It didn't show the comic book on the eBay listing, but it also didn't say it was missing. Um, but to be honest, it's all good. Uh, for the price I paid, like I say, I paid approximately £50 less. Uh, £40, £50 less than what this goes for. The condition's even better than I thought it was. And let's be honest, this is largely for display purposes, right? I would, of course, like to complete it. So I would like to add the comic. I'll try and keep a lookout for one online. Or if anybody has one, let me know. I'd be happy to buy one off you. But ultimately, it's just about having a nice condition sleeve that I can display. And yeah, um, aside from the comic book missing, I, I could not be happy with it. So I've got a bit of a loose plan as to what we're going to do now. I'm going to make uh, a little space for this and we're going to get it put into the PS2 area. So the way I'm going to make that space is I'm going to thin out my PS2 collection. Um, you know, it's far from all killer, no filler like the PS1. There's quite a lot of uh, quote unquote crap in the PS2 um, section here. So I'm going to go through, take a few of the filler titles out, make a bit of space um, so that we can make uh, a nice little display for Ultimate Spider-Man. Right then, so I definitely don't need Sky Odyssey in the collection. I don't think that's one I'm ever going to be in a rush to play. And I have, of course, removed Ultimate Spider-Man. We don't need this standard version anymore. Um, but yeah, we could do with moving a few more out, really. So what else can we find? 
It's harder than I thought, actually. I thought I had more filler, but I don't think I need ATV2. So that can go. There's some games I just don't want to get rid of, like Avatar. We've got both Avatar games here. I don't know, there's just something about them that I enjoy owning. Um, what else have we got? LA Rush? Do I need LA Rush? I don't know, man. There's something about the early 2000s, sort of bling bling that, yeah, it just takes me back. What else can we get rid of? Super trucks. I definitely <laughs> don't think I'm going to miss super trucks, that's for sure. <laughs> what else have we got? A couple more would be nice. Okay, so I've had to make some hard calls. Now, it wasn't as easy as I thought. I thought I had more filler than I do. But these are games that, realistically, I'm not going to miss or I'm not going to play or I've got better versions of the system. So, yeah, they've been taken out. Um, which has allowed me to make space for... Ooh, this beauty here, I'm never going to get tired of looking at this. It doesn't catch much light down here, unfortunately. So we might have to rework this PS2 section at some point, but... Had to get it forward facing, right? I just had to. And that is going to do it for this week's Ghetto Vlog. We got through it, right, guys? Uh, for everybody that stuck around this far, listening to me cough my way through this one, it's much appreciated. If you are new around here, please consider hitting that subscribe button. If you want to get involved with the Ghetto Gang, the Discord and everything that comes with that, there will be a link in the description below. But... Yeah, um, for a week which started with me feeling very unwell, um, it's turned into a very good week. We've had some amazing additions this week, right? Some pieces that I've been after for years and absolutely delighted with that. I'm starting to feel much better as well, which is great news. And yeah, we've got a big video coming on Wednesday, which like I say, every cloud has a silver lining, right? That video has now become something bigger and better than it would have been last week. So yeah, if there is a lesson to take from this week, it's that maybe everything happens for a reason. But as always, massive thank you for taking the time to watch. Have a great Sunday. Play your games. Keep it retro. I'll see you on Wednesday. Take care in a bit. Retro ghetto. <laughs> ghetto.